Hey guys, Scott with Heritage Farms, Texas. Well, today we're gonna make a video, basically you're gonna have a little bit of a farm recap. You're gonna see some of the stuff we did this weekend at the farm. We're still working on the trap slash corral. So you're gonna get to see some of that. But in the meantime, uh, we're also, it's Sunday night, the weather's halfway decent, it's time to grill. So we're gonna fire up the Traeger. So uh, what are we doing tonight? We are going to smoke slash grill some Angus patties. And uh, these two over here is uh, Nolan Ryan certified Angus beef straight from Texas. This right here is an 80-20 mix. Uh, I, I like a little fat in my burger. I think it gives it some juice. I think it gives it some flavor. These over here are actually uh, 85 15. These are a little bit thinner patties. Honestly, leftovers for the dogs, whatever we're cooking. But this is for dinner tonight. So, what are we using? We're going to use the Meat Church Holy Cow Rub. You know, it's got kosher uh, salt in it, it's got uh, pepper, it's, you know, it's got all kinds of seasoning that's just really good for beef. So, let's see if I can get this guy open. We're going to sprinkle a little on. And once again, it's kind of like everything else. You can put as much or as little as you want on here. No real uh, secret about this. Now this is my first time to ever smoke uh, burger patties like this. Normally, I'm cooking them on the uh, Weber Genesis. But today, we're gonna actually try smoking them. Super simple, nothing fancy about this. Uh, you know, we're gonna go up to about 375. You know, looking at some videos on YouTube and everything, it looks to me like uh, 375 is the magic number. We're gonna cook them for about a total of 15 minutes. Uh, we may flip them once or twice. Then we may turn the heat down and uh, put some cheese on it, melt the cheese, toast the buns, and uh, we'll be ready to go. So once we get these on the grill, we're talking 20 minutes total and dinner's ready. So uh, I'm gonna let these sit in the refrigerator for about 10 or 15 minutes, get the fire started, and we'll go from there. But also, uh, you're gonna see some videos, a uh, couple of videos today on uh, the work we did at the corral. Yesterday, we strung some uh, six-strand barbed wire, so you're gonna get to see that. And you're also gonna get to see a little bit uh, more welding that I did this weekend. So hey, glory be to God. When you're finished, uh, hit the thumbs up, leave us a comment, love to hear from you, thanks. All right, guys, well, the grill's up to 375. We got the uh, burgers out of the refrigerator, letting the seasoning set in. Uh, the other thing we're gonna do for a side dish tonight, of course, we're gonna have lettuce, tomatoes on the hamburger, pepper jack cheese. You have to use Best Made Texas pickles. Oh, we're also gonna warm up some uh, hot dogs for the dogs. And uh, we're gonna have tater tots as a side. I don't know if you guys have Sonic drive-ins around your area, but hey, I'm a big fan of a burger and tater tots. So we're gonna cook some tater tots in the Ninja Air Fryer. So uh, the tater tots have to go for 15 minutes. So you know what, it's perfect timing because we're gonna cook these for 15 minutes. Uh, about halfway through, we'll flip them over. Uh, then we'll come back the last couple of minutes, put some cheese on there melt the cheese and uh, toast the buns and we'll be ready to go. All right guys, so hey, enjoy the uh, videos. Uh, when we come back, we'll be taking them off the grill, but let's walk out and see what we got going. All right, you can see we're right at nope. the uh, 360, 375 range. It was just up there. All right. You gotta have a man spatula when you're doing this. If I told you guys I love this Traeger grill, look at that, that's a good looking patty. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna put the probe in and actually, hold on, I'll be right back. a little bit on the warm side. We're gonna put it in the thickest patty. Just like that, and then that way we can get a reading. When it gets up to about 160, we'll know it's done. So, uh, all right guys, so while this is going, check out the uh, fence video and the corral video, and then we'll come back and give you an update when it's done. More to follow. Hey guys, Scott with Heritage Farms, Texas. Well, here it is, Saturday afternoon, North Texas. 
Oh, what have we been doing? Well, it's been a pretty good day. It started down, it was 28 degrees this morning. Wind chill was down about 22. It was cold, cold, cold this morning. But last night we came down, so got down here last Friday night. And down here by the uh, headlight beams, I actually set the uh, these end posts, if you will. Put these two end posts on eight foot centers. Um, so set them on this end. And then we came back all the way on the other end and set them. And uh, so this morning, came back, fed the cattle, and started welding. So uh, welded up the end post. You know, once again, I'm no professional welder, but this is a short little hundred foot piece of fence. And uh, once again, it's the backside of a trap. So uh, not that important that it's absolutely perfect, but uh, we came in here and finished this deal. So uh, full day, full, full day, but uh, turned out to be a beautiful day. I mean, it's like uh, probably 54, 55 degrees, which is excellent working weather, very little wind and uh, makes for uh, just a nice day. So we keep working on this trap, man. I just can't tell you how excited I am because working cattle in the past, it was hard to get them in. I apologize for the shadows here. This is the other end that we're working on. And uh, so you can see here, same thing as that one. We came in here, welded up some end posts, put them on eight foot centers. Uh, for that little short span, that should hold. Normally I would use three posts, uh, you know, so you got basically the one that the wire is anchored to, and then you have two dead legs, which are pushing back. But in this case, you know what? That's good enough, man. The fact that it's eight feet apart, that's a two and seven eighths drill stem, thick walled, I mean, pipe, it's not going anywhere. And uh, the end pieces have two 80 pound bags of concrete in them. Uh, that one has uh, 180 pounds, so uh, it's holding. So that little section of fence looks pretty good. So that's what we put in today. So then over here, and you can kind of see back this way, you know what this reminds me of, guys? It almost is the size of a rodeo arena. It's almost the size of a calf roping rodeo arena, but that's not the intent. So, uh, but hey, you can see here, this is the highway frontage. This is all the original fence that we did going that way. This is the new section of fence that came down that we did last weekend. So every weekend, we're checking some boxes, man. We're getting things figured out. I want you to check out this old wagon wheel. And uh, pretty excited about having this. I have some ideas for it. Look how thick it is and everything. If you guys can envision, I'm gonna come back. I've got some square tubing I'm gonna put down, make the HF and make a nice Heritage Farms logo that we can hang on our main entrance gate just to let people know that, uh, hey, HF, Heritage Farms. So, man, just look at all the work that we've done over the last three months. I, glory be to God, man. I've just had, I've been blessed with good weather. I've been blessed by having Dell's help, my wife, my daughter, and uh, we have made a lot happen. More importantly, we're getting this where we can work cattle. And as we expand our herd, I mean, there may be times when I need to get 70, 80, 90 head of cattle in here. And, uh, you know, you got to have a facility that can handle that. So that's the plan. So what's coming up in future weeks? Well, we're going to probably come in here and remove the squeeze chute. That's right, guys. I want you to look at those telephone poles. Just massive. One of the things I have to do is buy a new blade so I can cut them all off at the same height as the uh, squeeze chute. I know, I'm a little anal and it bothers me that they're uneven, but I'm gonna cut them off the, the same height as the squeeze chute. Uh, we're gonna come in here and move the squeeze chute. Why? Because we're gonna put a concrete slab. We're gonna set that squeeze chute on a, uh, you know, I don't know, 16 by 16 uh, concrete slab. And then we're gonna come in on each corner of the concrete slab. We're gonna put a uh, two and seven eight inch posts that are gonna go up about 10 feet high, and we're gonna put a cover over it. 
That's right, because there are certain times of the year that you need to work cattle. If you're pregnancy checking, artificial insemination, uh, giving shots, sick cow, whatever, you need to be able to work. And if it's raining, hey, that's important. But more importantly, the reason we're gonna do this is squeeze shoots, they're expensive. And if you leave them sitting on the dirt, you can see we got this one on blocks. You know, they'll rust down on the bottom. But more importantly, the sun is just terrible on them. The sun will bake them, the weather. So if you can put one under cover, it's gonna double the life of it. So what little we'll spend for a uh, cover over the top, we'll get back in the fact that that squeeze chute should last multiple, multiple years. All right, guys. And then of course, on the far end, we're working on the uh, loadout where we can actually back a trailer up and load out bulk cattle. So uh, that's important too. All right, but hey, look what the wife did today. She came back and she painted using Sherwin-Williams heavy industrial marine paint. I'm not gonna show you my welds, but uh, you know what? That was my first time welding pipe. Pretty happy with it. I think the project turned out good. Now I gotta go spend some money and buy some gates. So uh, more, to, more to follow. Hope you guys enjoy it. Leave us a comment. What do you think, man? Is the trap coming together? Infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. You can't say enough about that for a small farm, ranch operation. And especially if you're planning to grow, you just can't have enough good working pens and a facility that you can actually handle everything. So, man, what a difference this is. So pumped. Glory be to God. Thank you for this beautiful day. Hey guys. I don't know what's gonna happen this next week with the inauguration and everything, but I hope common sense prevails and everybody learns to get along. We need a lot of give and take in this country. Uh, we need the ability to uh, make decisions. And hey, we're all Americans at the end of the day. Hit the thumbs up, leave me a comment. Please subscribe if you haven't. Would love to hear from you. Thanks guys. Okay, so down here on this end, this is the uh, south end of the trap. You can see now going all the way up there to the road where we're at. So right down here, we're working on our loadout. And what we're gonna do here is basically, uh, I don't know, there's a million ways to do this. But you know, you work with what you got. And I'll tell you what, these panels are heavy, heavy, heavy duty. So we're gonna set one post over here. Show you just in essence how this will work. Da, 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 da. All right, so you have the big trap, and then we'll work them into this smaller holding pin right here. The cows, when we get ready to work them, we'll just walk them around the outside perimeter. This tree is really in the way, but hey, work with what you got. They're gonna come through a 12 foot gate here. Once they get into here, we'll take them up into one of the two pins up there sort them out anything we don't need we'll put back in the smaller holding pin over here then we have the lane this gate right here going up the lane this gate comes over to here and holds on that post to create a funnel so that when the cows come in kind of a bud box design and they'll, they'll funnel right on up so that's what we're working on today it's kind of putting a few final touches on things making sure gates are working set that post yesterday i'm not ready to uh, tie those panels to that post yet but once we do we'll come in put us a uh, gate right there and the theory is this eight foot gate will open inward you will back the cattle trailer into this spot you'll use this as the left side so the trailer will come in about one foot we have one gate that opens on the trailer which will overlap over here we'll hold it This gate will come back like this. The eight foot gate opens onto this. And in essence, if you can think of me being in the, uh, the trailer, you now have a lane because that opening is gonna be closed with the gate hanging on this post. You now have a lane to run the cattle up into the trailer. That's the theory. If that does not work, we're gonna take uh, two cattle panels, go out 12 feet, and then we got the gate to close behind them. But either way, 
a much better way to load out because right now the only way we are loading out of this working pin is through the squeeze chute and that's just a, a little challenging time consuming loading them one at a time it's nice if you have a bulk load out and you're trying to get six or seven calves in at one time just goes easier so anyway that's what we're doing putting a gate on the south side trying to figure out how we want to do our bulk loadout. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the little patties off, the thin ones. We think they are done by now. Ooh, look how moist they are. We're gonna get those off. The other thing we're gonna do, the dogs had to have some hot dogs. Did I tell you our dogs are spoiled? They are honestly spoiled. All right, so we got those done. Not me. Uh, look at those burgers. Now, what we're gonna do is we like a little cheese on our burgers, so we're gonna put a little pepper jack cheese melt. If I can get it open. back in about five minutes and we'll be ready to eat. Okay guys, well, we've reached the magic number, which is 160. So we're gonna take the buns off. Get them off here. Get a little toasty. Hopefully not too toasty. off the grill and now of course this is up to you for your individual taste on how you want to finish it what condiments you want to use whether it's mustard ketchup combination ranch miracle whip this is what i'm going to do i'm going to take a little piece of lettuce down here on the bottom oh, oh, oh. actually we'll put that on the bottom right there I'm going to get that. Oh, man that is a juicy burger right there I'm gonna put a little lettuce little tomato on here oh yes we gotta have some pickles spacing is everything you can already see we got a little bit of a problem so what I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a little ranch dressing so you might call this the heart attack burger hope not but everything's good ranch. Put that on there. Oh yeah. I'm a smash it down kind of guy. Man, what a good looking burger. I tell you the tater tots turned out great. All right guys, this is what I like. I like a burger that takes two hands to eat it. Mm. I can't talk to you guys anymore. I gotta run. Glory be to God. <laughs>